Hi, welcome to this week's edition of Belmont Journal. I'm Steve Rosales, your host. Today we're talking skating rinks. You know, I've been around this town a long time, and when I was a kid, the only rink in town was literally on Route 2 at the end of the Rake Street. It was an MDC rink. Open, no, no roof, not much of anything, just a hunk of ice that that's all we had to play on. Uh, in 1969, Belmont built a hockey rink. That's a long time ago. It needs a lot of help. It's had a lot of use. So with me today, joined by Mark Haley, the chair of the Belmont Municipal Skating Rink Building Committee. Whew, that's a mouthful. Uh, I'll join with Danelle Long, a building committee member, and Lucinda Zuniga, Belmont Youth Hockey Association and professional fundraiser extraordinaire. So let's talk rinks. Ready, people? Welcome, everyone. Okay, Mark, here's a loaded question. Why do we need a new rink? The current <laughs> rink has a lot of deficiencies, as you said. It's Do also tell. it's also 50-plus years old. So you could go in and build and repair, and it would cost less, but you'd still have the same rink. What we've done is expanded it to include also community uses and high school uses. The high school needs additional locker space for all of their teams. That's been incorporated into this program. So it is somewhat a misnomer of calling this just a municipal skating rink. This is an athletic facility that'll service not only the town and the community, but also the high school. And it's sorely needed. Okay, well, give me the executive summary because we do have, we're trying to have a, a show to convey it to the public. So what are sure. some of the deficiencies you, you, uh, you alluded to? So the roof and the structure are rusting, and there's some photographs of that and a video. The ice-making equipment is original equipment. The compressors have been rebuilt, I think, twice at least. The electrical systems in the rink are the same ones that were installed in 1969. ADA is non-compliant in that rink. So in other words, you do not have ADA compliance in the rink. The slab now is heaving because the slight site drainage along the west side allows water to get under the slab. And when you freeze the rink in the winter, the slab comes up and all of a sudden the Zamboni is cutting the ice down to make ice and now it's into the concrete. We have birds all over the height. It might as well be an Avery, is that the right word? Aviary, yeah. Avery, yeah. a birdhouse. A birdhouse. Like glorifying birdhouse. Glor birdhouse. Yes. Yeah. We, we, used to, we used to play, or the rec department used to play uh, birds of prey to try to drive the smaller birds out. It didn't work. But anyway, the, how, the, the rink has significant bird droppings all over it, especially as we try to open it come the fall. So you, you, you come here with a lot of experience with this rink. You were the hockey coach, right, for the, for the girls' program. That's Maybe correct. you started the girls' program. How many years ago was that? How, how long were you the hockey coach? 1993, I coached for 20 years. Prior to that, I used to run the Saturday night program and the Sunday morning program with, God, God rest his soul, Dan Kelleher, for many years, since the early 80s. So I know the rink quite well. You know the rink. You've, you've grown up on the rink. Uh, you joined with a couple of, well, I know one player we'll talk to in a minute. Um, so, and you come with building committee experience here in town. I'm, yes. a, I'm a veteran on a couple committees, but... The first, the first building committee I was on was with Wally Flewelling, and we were putting a new floor in the field house, the Wenner field house. And I moved on to doing Winbrook and Burbank schools, the renovation of both of those, and then the Wellington School and also Harris Field. So yes, I've been around the building committee. And of course, uh, a member of uh, engineer, engineer extraordinaire. Yeah. Haley Aldridge, that's Haley and it? Aldridge, Inc. is uh, the firm I work for. That's correct. In fact, the original high school was, a foundation was designed by Haley and Aldridge. Well, I like the original high school. What can I say? Exactly. <laughs> Especially the foundation. Exactly. <laughs> Those piles never failed. I'm telling you. You're building more of a complex. That's what you alluded to. It's more than just a sheet of ice. Right now, what that, do we have? A couple of locker rooms, a warm-up room, maybe an office, and a... And a a hunk of ice. That's correct. We have four dressing rooms, office, small concession stand, and an equipment room. That's okay. it. That's all we have. And what are we, what are we, what's it going to grow to? Because it's expanded. The White it, Field House is coming down, right? The White Field House is coming down as part of the program. The current rink is around just over 30,000 square feet. The new, the new facility will be about 48,000 square feet. So we're adding about 18,000 square feet of additional space. 
and I'm going to have Danell talk about what okay. those spaces and program are. Sure. But the program came from the school department and the school committee saying, if, when the White Field House comes down, we need places for locker room space for the high school teams, not just the hockey team. Football in the fall, hockey in the winter, spring sports in the spring. Plus, they wanted two locker rooms for use by Harris Field. Home and away teams can come. Right now at Harris Field, there is nowhere for the athletes to go when they have a game. That's the football slash uh, soccer. That's the, that's the one with the grandstand when you say that's Harris Field. Harris Field is the grandstand. Football plays there. Soccer plays there. Field hockey, rugby, all of those things that have sports and spectators all play at Harris Field. And why didn't they build more, more locker rooms in the now new building, that uh, the big school that we M have. MSBA would only fund two locker rooms, as I understand that's it. That's the state. The state, the state, the state would fund state two locker rooms only, despite all the programs we have? That's correct. And okay. in fact, that, that's why they kept the, the Wena Field House, because the state would not fund a new field house like they do today, although we did back when we built it in 69, 70. The town kept that and just renovated it. But the state would not pay for something like that. Okay. So, all right. So even if they wanted to, we'd have to pay for them one way or the other. That's correct. Okay. That's a fair, because I hear stuff around town. When you go shopping at the Star Market or out at the Dunkin' Donuts, you, you, you hear rumblings sometimes about some project such as this. So uh, you alluded to the program. And uh, I think we will turn to, to uh, Danelle. Uh, Danelle, you come with a great deal of expertise. I do. I am an architect and planner by trade, and uh, I also have three children who do play uh, with the town and with the school hockey teams. And uh, so I have this unique perspective of how is a rink facility used. Okay. Um, so so he, Mark alluded to you know additional programs. So how many locker rooms are going to be in the new and proposed? Six locker rooms for the high school, four dressing rooms. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think we went through a pretty rigorous programming exercise. Sure. How, was that, how did that decision get arrived at? Well, I think we wanted to look at how, if we are creating the space uh, for the ice hockey team and having adequate uh, JV and varsity locker room spaces, how do we make sure we utilize this building as to the full extent possible? And uh, through a programming exercise, through multiple seasons, we could identify who uses the building and when. And through this, uh, we can see the football use in the fall, uh, ice hockey in the winter, lacrosse in the spring, uh, and then some of these other flexible, smaller locker room spaces being used by field hockey, uh, soccer, rugby, track and field. Um, I think lacrosse, were they would lacrosse too? I mean, what are yes. we leaving yeah. out? I mean, there's a lot mm -hmm. of stuff going. It's an active place. There's always track and field, I assume, mm -hmm. also in Track and field. The, the high school, uh, talking to the athletic director, Belmont High has more teams than anybody else in the Middlesex League, which is, and they mm -hmm. have really no dressing rooms at the new high school. Well, that's problematic, unless you're going to change in the car. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Behind the tree. Of which there are very few. <laughs> and the facilities for, you know, to use the restroom, they're using porta potties before they hit the fields. Um, on the student athletes are using them, the spectators, you know, the grandparents coming down. We have no bathroom facilities, and so those would be in our new our new facility, and so would have much better accommodations for our student athletes and our community in general. Okay, so there are some people that would say, and maybe you can expound on this, you know, what's wrong with the white field house, other than being old? It has many deficiencies also. It's 1930s building. They've renovated the locker rooms and put new lockers in them. But, you know, there's cracking of the brickwork, the masonry. There is no elevator to make the second floor accessible. Ah, okay. So you'd had to add an elevator. You'd have to do some major repairs to that building to keep it. And it was always planned to be demolished, even part of the high school program was to demolish that building. We asked them to delay that as we started to look at and designing the rink. And the reason we asked to delay it is because the student athletes at Belmont High would have nowhere to, if they tore it down, they were supposed to tear it down this June. All of a sudden you would have no locker room space for any of the other athletes. Okay, well that's, that would be problematic, I would think. I've been down to a football game already and 
well attended. Let's see how we do. But uh, I haven't been to soccer yet, but I get to a whole bunch of those things. Um, so that being said, I think we, we were chatting before to prepare for the show, and you did make note that, because I said, well, why don't we just keep the white field house and make a smaller rink? And I think you, Danielle, was were, were talking about the efficiencies that one building would give us over right. two buildings. Maybe you can explain your thoughts on that. Definitely. Um, so having... Uh this space under one roof, uh, some of it exists in the planning and, and how we've designed it. Um, and so if you can maximize uh, the shared use and have flexible spaces is one, one part of it. I think another area to really think about is energy efficiency and uh, how inefficient the current field house building is uh, in its operation. Uh, let alone the rink itself, which is essentially an open air facility. It's not insulated. Uh, so if we can look at uh, enclosing and insulating one building, uh, have updated systems that allow us to, you know, optimize energy efficiency, reclaim waste heat from the ice making processes, uh, to reheat other uh, areas of the building. Uh, there are many you know, valuable things that we can do through one project instead of it being two. And so again, it's a matter of efficiency. Yeah, and if I, if I can add to that, mm -hmm. is, and this is important for people to understand is that when you're making ice, you're always trying to get rid of heat because the compressors essentially generate significant heat. So we're gonna have an energy recovery system, is what you were, Danielle is saying, which we then can heat the locker rooms in the wintertime off of that waste heat. So that right there is so much more efficient than what the Whitefield House does today. Whitefield House does today is just the heat goes in, the heat goes out. Mm -hmm. it, it makes it, so it'll be a much more energy efficient building. Well, it'll be built, I'm sure, to uh, I don't know, whatever stretch code or whatever energy codes you have. I mean, when it was built, it was a tennis facility in the, it was built during Bobby Orr and Billie Jean King Chris Everett, uh, and, and, you know, and the plans uh, came from Buckingham Brown, Buckingham Brown and Nichols. Yeah, and uh, so it was built. It was hockey in the winter and open air, no sides tennis, tennis in the in the in the summertime, and they just put up uh, metal sides, basically, right? Mm -hmm. I think to enclose the thing. It is. It's colder in the rig than it is outside, even when it's freezing. But uh, okay, so and so it will be a lot more energy efficient. That savings can be recaptured? Absolutely. And I think at a minimum, the goal is to have a net neutral uh, facility in terms of operating costs year to year. Um, and then I think we could even go so far as by having these flexibly planned spaces, whether it being for leagues or a community room that can be rented out f for the town, uh, there is a way to then have this potentially be a revenue producing facility, a lot like um, some of the neighboring towns that do have facilities like this. Okay, so, all right, so you alluded to it, so, okay, I'm sitting down. Talk about money. What's the, uh, we don't have all the costs, of course, yet at this point, because we're looking for, I guess the vote is, will the town authorize a debt exclusion for the funding for this project to go forward. And the funding so, would come through town meeting. That's correct. Sometime, sometime, sometime in, the fall. in the fall. That's correct. Uh, but the voters will have a, a vote on, what, uh, November 8th, one that's way right. or the other, to make a decision on this particular project going forward or being reconsidered in some correct. fashion. So what are you looking for, Mark? What do, what do you it, think the gonna, cost of this It's going to run gonna somewhere in the range of about uh, mid-$30 million dollar range. For a whole complex? Whole facility. Okay. So and then that includes the parking and a, a plaza in front where the Whitefield House is today. And it also includes tearing down the Whitefield House. Okay. So demolition, rebuilding, new parking, new entryway, and uh, I guess to the plaza you called it. That's a nice word for it. But an entryway both to the football field, Harris Field, and the new uh, rink or athletic Sorry. facility, whatever they name the thing. Yes. It, do, it would not include the building of the fields west of the rink. Correct. Yeah, and and, and it should be noted for the for the for the viewers out there that uh, that uh, you're you're just 
building what the town leaders, school department and selectmen, ask you to build. That's the building right? You're not charge. there to deal with all that. So they, when they stuck you with the fields or designing or saying put locker rooms or whatever, that's really not of your decision. Your, your decision as a committee, building committee, is to take what your marching orders, so to speak. The, the stakeholders right? define the program. Correct. And we're and you, just fitting it in. you figure it out. Okay. So, um, and you're doing it remarkably well based on what they've been asking for. So now we have... We'll turn now to you. We're talking money now. So we've yeah. heard we've heard structure. We've heard some programming. Now, uh, Lucinda, you have a uh, professional fundraising experience for both Beth Israel Hospital and the Mass Museum, Museum, of, Museum Fine of Fine Arts. Arts. Yes, yes, I do. I do. And this is a project that's close to my heart. Um, I played for Mark Haley back in the 90s, so I am very familiar with this uh, ring. I hope he gave you enough ice time. <laughs> We did. Well, let me tell you, we, the fact that we have our own, our own rink in town was huge. You know, being a student athlete, you know, going from school, I'd go to the library, get my homework done, and then walk right over to the rink is, means a lot for student athletes, and especially the academic rigors that go along with our high school. So I did have plenty of ice time, and he was a great coach, but I'll tell you, even 25 years ago, this rink was not in a great state whatsoever, and the field house wasn't either. We couldn't even use the bathrooms in the field house most of the time. There'd be caution tape over the bathrooms. You couldn't use the showers. Um, and so now I'm back in town with my family. My kids are playing hockey, um, and the conditions are frankly pretty deplorable. So um, when this opportunity came about that I could help with fundraising, I jumped to it. And I must say we've had tremendous success. Um, we're doing everything that we can to offset the tax burden to residents with our fundraising efforts. Okay, and this fundraising is being conducted. You're the, you're the fundraising co-chair for the uh, Belmont Youth Hockey Association? Correct. BYHA, -E for those in the know, yes, right? Okay. Yes, Belmont Youth Hockey. Uh, there you go. Yes, yes. And so, Museum of Fine Arts, Beth Israel Hospital, Belmont Youth Hockey. Yes, That's yes. such a... Close connection. I can let see me, that. Let me tell you. <laughs> so how we do, how we doing? We're doing great. <laughs> oh. um, you know, the fact that we have this rink in town that has not been good for generations now has actually given me an easy case for support as I've gone out to talk to people. Um, we've raised just shy of $2 million since, since February, which in the fundraising circles is a remarkable. Only since February. It's only now since today February. Is September 26th. Yes, Your committee's yes. only been around for... <laughs> Since May or June, right? Correct. We have I'm many. We have, no, we have dozens of very dedicated teammates um, who are, you know, have full time day jobs and they're raising families, but they're making time for this because um, it's really our last shot to keep a rink in town and it means a lot. So we've had a million dollar grant intention from the Belmont Savings Bank Foundation, which was great. And then we've had um, over over a hundred individuals and families in town giving us gifts and commitments that have gone anywhere from twenty five dollars, and we've also had commitments from families in the fifty thousand dollar range. Um, so we're at about two million now, and once this vote passes on November eighth, we have a list of companies and corporations who will go to next because um, their first question is, what's the timing? When is this going to happen? Um, you know, where can my name be in the facility? So once the vote passes, we'll shift gears and move to our phase of corporate um, and company support for the project. Okay. If, if, I, if I can add one thing there, yeah. and, and, and it's money. Without a rink, if we do nothing and we close down the facility, the high school program to maintain it is going to run around a quarter of a million dollars a year to rent ice for the high school program. That does not include BYBA. Right. No. Just to bust them and to move them around, it'll be in that order of magnitude, Steve. Okay. So, and, and of course, then we don't lose public skating, figure skating, BYJ. I don't know how many skating kids are BYJ. Perhaps over, you know. Over 400 families. We have a waiting list. It's a really active and robust program. And, you know, the caliber, caliber of our, our programs, the boys won the championship in 2020, and this is in, in Massachusetts. I mean, this is a big deal. It's, a, it's an excellent program, and it would be such a shame that if we didn't have the facility to in town 
um, for our kids. If we build it, if the voters vote yes, will it pay for itself operationally? So it will. Um, looking, talking to other towns, um, it will definitely be revenue neutral, and the hope is that it would be revenue generating, um, which we feel like is a great, a great point to bring up to community members. We don't. It's a wonderful town, but we don't have so many facilities in town that are revenue producing. And that revenue would come from what? Just rental of the ice. Rental of the ice. Right now, um, Belmont Youth Hockey can't even play our home games in Belmont because we're part of the Valley program where they basically say the Belmont rank is inadequate. We don't want any of our kids coming to Belmont to play home games. So that's just one group where we get revenue from. Um, and there's other leagues as well that are they, they're not interested in playing in our facility right now. So we'd okay. get a lot of revenue. Um, and Belmont Youth Hockey right now because we are a facility that's only opened November through March because of the facilities. We have to be renting ice time elsewhere. So Belmont Youth Hockey is spending $3,000 a week to rent ice time in other towns. All that could stay in town with, with this new facility. Okay. Yeah. And you if had I can to add? jump in as well, uh, being part of this committee and working with uh, various members on this committee who have different backgrounds, uh, including the rec department, uh, really learning about how their programs operate and who they serve. Uh, I think we we find that uh, there's revenue uh, possibilities through rentals for you know birthday parties or having a community space for uh, you know an anniversary party, something that allows uh, the community to to use this space. Um, and then the rec department also has a variety of programs that. Um, whether it's the sport program uh, or even thinking ahead. If we had this facility 12 months of the year, perhaps there isn't ice uh, during the summer months. It's allowing them to think what other type of events can we okay. use this building for. Well, that's terrific. It'll be, mm -hmm. So it'll be used. Mm -hmm. It'll be used, and that's well, we all want it to be used. So, okay, we, we got a couple minutes left uh, before we show a video of what it looks like. The picture will tell a thousand words. Uh, but the BYHA, for the fundraising, which going through through your, your organization, Belmont Youth Hockey Association, that's a 501c3 recognized exempt charitable organization. Correct. Correct? Correct, yes. And we can find out more uh, contact, belmontrink.com. Correct. Is that it? Yes. Belmontrink.com. Belmontrink.com. What could be simpler? Um, and if you want to donate, it'll lay it all out. They could use your help. Uh, and for the rink rink, for the Belmont Municipal Skating Rink Building Committee, we find that on the Belmont uh, government set website, right? Information, town, so town plans website, and, and things then you on go the, to the town rink. website. Go where? Go to the rink. Correct, Danell? Yes, under the uh, program or the committees tab, boards and committees, uh, there is a... Municipal <sighs> Skating Rink. Tab. Building right. committee tab. Open mm -hmm. that tab. Everything you want to know will be in there. The vote is November 8th. Whatever side of the fence you're on, get out and vote. It's your opportunity. It's our community. Vote, 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 one way or the other. Okay, uh, before we go to the video, uh, I was hosted by Dante Mazzioli, Belmont High School hockey coach for the last uh, for 40 years, who knows the rink probably as well as anybody next to Mark Haley. Uh, I want to thank Mark. I want to thank Danelle Long, Lucinda Zuniga. Good luck to you all. Thank you for your efforts. All volunteer. No money. All this caliber. The town's a lucky place. I'm a lucky guy for living here. That's it for Belmont Journal. I want to thank our Cracker Jack staff, Jeremy and Matt, and of course our executive producer, Joanna uh, Zuvlis. And for all of us here, I'm Steve Rosales. Take care. My name is Dante Mazzioli. Uh and I'm in front of the Skip Figueroa Skating Facility, uh, a rink that was built in 1969, 70 uh, vintage. Uh, its time has passed, and I'm here to inform you some of the deficiencies. If we look down the driveway here, uh, we're gonna walk down, and uh, this is the facade of the building, the entrance to the building. This is where the majority of the people would come. Uh, the asphalt is all deteriorated pretty bad. Uh, it shows even, it shows up pretty good today because today you have uh, uh, all the puddles and things uh, 
like this. So uh, this is puddles today. In the winter time, this is ice. Now we walk into the entrance of the building. As you can see up on the, uh, the ceiling, all the insulation has been eaten and deteriorated over the years by birds. This is a haven for, uh, for birds. Uh, you come in in the winter, the birds are running through the building. These, these stands over here are from the old um, middle school. Not the, not the new one that's 15 years old. So some 20 years ago, these, steals, these fan stands came out of the gymnasium of the middle school. They don't meet today's code. They certainly don't meet today's standards. But we didn't have any stands in here at that point. We transferred to these four sections of, of stands for the people to view. As you can see, the risers on them are about 16, 18 inches. The code is seven and a half. So we have about four, five, six inches of sand on top of it, and that's how we refrigerate our building. The problem with doing that, the kick plate at the bottom of the boards is inconsistent. It's six, eight inches in this end, and it goes down to the far end of about three. Uh, our roof, we had these beautiful lit panels in here, but because uh, they have been left to deteriorate, we don't really get natural light in here. We generally, back in the day, could spend uh, up till like three, four o'clock in the afternoon each day, not even lighting the, the facility because we had natural light from the panels. As you can see the panels, and I hope the film shows it, the panels have deteriorated. They're all, uh, they have rust on them from the deteriorating roof. We have a corrugated roof on this building. When it rains, the building, uh, uh, the, the building lets uh, rain come into the building. If it's winter time, the rain sticks to the ice, causes uh, dimples, imperfection, and a hockey situation is compounded just because the puck is moving, it hits the dimples, causes, it causes a lot of problems. Um, we put a coating on the entire building some 23 years ago. Um, Mark Haley and myself were both vice chairmen of that procedure. We were on the recreation department. Uh, we understood it was a 10-year coating, but in 10 years came and went, we didn't put any money back into it. So, it's, so 23 years later, we have all the steel girders rusting, and we have the deterioration of the, of the uh, insulation on the roof here, and it's, it's irreplaceable at this point. Uh, it's way past its life. It's way past its life. Yeah. These benches are covered with bird poop, as it may be called. But it's, as we put these tops on them now, so this isn't completely covered and it's disgusting. But many times you'll be in here, the birds are a haven in this building because we have lots of voids in the, in the walls. The building is made as an old butler building and it was uh, constructed uh, with minimal concrete. Concrete is certainly on the footings, uh, but even the building is, is all, it's got holes in the building from deterioration, from age. It's 50 years old. See right here? That's a watermark. See those marks right there? When that hits the ice, it looks like it's not that much. It, it, it hits and freezes, so the, there's like all little humps all over this ice. You wouldn't believe what it looks like. If it's raining, it's unbelievable, the humps and the deficiencies on the building. The lights haven't been replaced. The, listen, the lights in this building have, have a, a, a shelf life. They way expected their shelf life. They have not been changed. They have not been, it has not been taken care of over here. 
all those bulbs out there, just because the bulbs, uh, the bulbs are illuminated, they lo lost their illumination. They don't have it, that's why it's dark in here. Look at all the shadows all over this building. There's no one even here to play. Hockey needs brilliant light, not this. See the water? The water's actually coming through the roof that is so badly deteriorated, it's dripping inside the facility. It started at the end of the roof and it will work its way up till it's on top of the ice. Look at the floor. It has standing water an inch on the west side of the building because the grades and the drains have, have, are, are all clogged and they don't exist. So now the water is actually coming from the outside and it's coming through the wall onto the floor. The water gets underneath the slab, and in the winter time, the moisture from over the years from not uh, repairing and protecting the drainage, the drainage goes underneath the slab, and the slab heaves. When the slab on the ice heaves, then the ice that's supposed to be two to three inches becomes like a half inch thick. And you have the voids where there's no ice on the west side of this rink. On this side where the team locker space is, those, this is all a drainage, there's a drainage problem. We'll go outside and talk about the maintenance and the care of the outside of the building. See the roof got leaking over there on, this, on, this, on the roof line? That the downspout is not taking any more water, so the water sits against the building and goes underneath the slab and it heaves the floor in the winter time. The floor should have no moisture around it. That's why we have all these downspouts. But they're not effective because half of them aren't working correctly. Here's an electrical outlet on the bottom of it, broken concrete that's attempted to be repaired. The it's not on a, G a GFI outlet, it's on a standard outlet. We have kids coming through here with metal skates on and metal blades on, and we have this outlet that's hang hanging out like this. We only have two locker spaces, and we added wooden ones inside the building over here probably 20 years ago. Uh, we had no room for the hockey officials. This is an officials room. Uh, this is a small room. Uh, for, it's good for uh, young youths, but it certainly was not acceptable for a teenage team or a high school team. So when they practice during the day and they have a game at a high school level, if, if the if the girls having a game and the girls using the locker room, then the boys' teams, both the home and away, have to wait until the girls' game is finished to go in there to undress, get their skates off, and then the boys can go in. Totally unacceptable. The minimal the shrink should have is six locker spaces. This is the compressor, chiller barrel room, refrigeration room. These are the original compressors that were installed in 1969. The motors have been rebuilt, reconditioned, and they are in good working condition. This above is a chiller barrel. It tr transmits the energy from the compressor, sends the brine or refrigeration into the pipes on the rink and makes it cold. This was replaced probably 20 some odd years ago. It, it failed, we replaced it. And it's been in good working condition. 
the problem we have is this is old, antiquated equipment. It's run on electricity. The misconception that it's running on diesel, oil, or gasoline is false. It's run on electric motors generating, generating the energy to refrigerate the slab outside. This technology is antiquated. It's not, it's not energy efficient. This is our heat for the building. The only place the building has heat is in the office, the bathrooms, and the warm-up room. This is, runs on heating oil. I would suggest you it's original equipment from 1970 though I don't know that for a fact, but it also is not energy efficient. Unless you've been in this facility, you can't really appreciate how much the building is in disrepair.